Have you ever been beaten by a child? No, but I've beaten a child. With a crowbar. <laughs> what a terrible joke. I'll say. They didn't even let Jason Todd stay dead. Welcome back to another episode of Batman the Animated Recap. Last time we covered It's Never Too Late, featuring a gangster getting redemption. This time, we're recapping a divisive episode that- It sure is! Hey, you can't interrupt the intro, I was right in the middle of a flow! I can interrupt whenever I want! No one likes you! In fact, I'd say we're a mere five episodes from these reviews being entirely puppets! Now see, that is just hurtful. Anyway, a divisive episode that introduces the Penguin to the show. Season 1, Episode 13 of Batman the Animated Series, I've Got Batman in My Basement. We open on a heist where two thieves are stealing a pricey Fabergé egg. What is a Fabergé egg, anyway? Can you make an omelette out of it? They are jeweled eggs created by the House of Fabergé in St. Petersburg, many of which were gifts for the wives and mothers of the Tsars Alexander III and Nicholas II. What? How do you know that? I only have two hobbies working out and art history. The two thieves cut through the skyscraper window and retrieve the egg using an extender arm with a claw. Now look, say what you will about their methods. That takes some serious skill. You ever tried picking something up with one of those things? Nightmare. While we're discussing ridiculousness, why does this egg have window access and a spotlight on it? Whoever is in charge of security for this thing should be shot and then fired. And then shot again! The thieves then head to the roof, which is puzzling. I mean, they didn't start from the roof, and we know this because we see the window washer cart moving up towards the window from the street, and it didn't look like they set off any alarms from the theft, so why not go back down to the street to, you know, a getaway car? Oh! Oh, I know the answer to this! Are you gonna say, because Batman? Ugh. Never mind. On the roof, the two thieves are confronted by Batman, who gets the drop on them until this happens. Batman then gets messed the hell up by the biggest vulture I have ever seen. In the scuffle, the two thieves get away, but Batman does discover some bird seed on the roof, which was presumably used to attract the vulture. We then cut to a Gotham neighborhood the next day where two kids, Sherman and his friend Roberta, are checking out Sherman's new junior detective kit. Ugh, children. I learned my lesson after getting betrayed by that little runt Jordan in Be a Clown. What's that they say about working with children and animals? That you shouldn't do it? No, that you should kill them. They can't work with you if they're dead. I don't think that's the expression. Eh, you say tomato, I say dead. A couple of teens show up and start harassing Sherman. One of them takes the detective kit binoculars and thinks they see a hawk in the sky. After Roberta retrieves the binoculars, Sherman looks and says that the bird is not a hawk, but a vulture. He and Roberta head off to investigate, while the bullies laugh dismissively at the notion of a vulture in Gotham City. I loathe bullies. Give me five minutes with those brats and I'll have them groveling at Sherman's feet. Good. Use your aggressive feelings, Crane. Let the hate flow through you. <laughs> Following the vulture leads Sherman and Roberta to a condemned factory. Roberta has reservations about going in, but Sherman just runs in without a care in the world. Inside, we find the two thieves from the Fabergé egg heist waiting around for the boss, who is revealed to be... the Penguin! We also learn that Sherman has his own alter ego, the Expositor. The Penguin! They stole the Von Ulster Fabergé egg! That thing's worth a fortune! The kids are about to be attacked by Penguin's pet vulture, Scrap, when Batman saves them, retrieves the egg, and incapacitates Penguin and his goons. Now, <laughs> that is some peak Batmaning right there. Ha! <laughs> Don't get used to it. What? Nothing. Sherman accidentally switches on a conveyor belt that puts him and Roberta in peril. <laughs> what is the purpose of this machine? This was clearly a factory for processing and packaging birdseed. Why would they need a machine to shred burlap and explode a bag of birdseed? Because Batman! Boom! Didn't see it coming that time, did you? That doesn't make any sense. You don't make any sense. Now, now, what did we talk about, you two? When tensions rise, you need to stop, take a breath, and say something nice to each other. Fine. Bane, I, I appreciate you, and 
I admire your chiseled physique. And I appreciate that you will soon have the same hairstyle as me, even if mine is shaved and not the product of bad genetics. Why, you... He, he's not doing it right. That is it, Bane. You're on a timeout. But I... Uh, Carry on. Batman gets the kids to the building exit, telling them to get out before heading back inside to apprehend the penguin. Unfortunately, Batman's hubris gets the better of him as he slow walks towards his foe. Yeah. <laughs> Batman makes it outside and almost to the Batmobile before falling unconscious. Fortunately, Sherman and Roberta didn't leave entirely and rush over to help him. Sherman manages to fend off the Penguin's thugs by just randomly pushing all the buttons on the console. Lame, yes, but we do get to see a ton of features on the Batmobile that we don't normally. Sherman finally gets the hatch closed on the Batmobile and they begin driving away by Roberta working the pedals while he steers. That is a recipe for disaster. I once crashed a go-kart into a building in a similar scenario. I mean, I wasn't trying to save Batman from the Penguin, but there was two of us in a one-person go-kart. I was working the steering and gas, while the other person worked the brake. And that was just a go-kart with a top speed of like 20 miles an hour. These two were in a rocket-propelled arsenal. What could go wrong? Well, I was just thinking we haven't had any explosions this episode, so hopefully... everything! Sherman and Roberta managed to shake off the Penguin and his goons and get away. Uh, no explosions, but plenty of property damage along the way. <laughs> I'll take it! We cut to Batman waking up in Sherman's basement, and I immediately have to call shenanigans here. There is no way these two kids drove the Batmobile to Sherman's house unnoticed, then managed to carry Batman into Sherman's house and down the stairs into the basement. I mean, Roberta does look pretty tough. Maybe she's on the Venom. Aren't you on timeout? I got let off for good behavior. It's only been like a minute. It was very good behavior. Sherman explains to Batman where he is and says the following. We're lying low in my basement. See? This is my crime lab. It's not exactly the Batcave. What a weird statement to make. Is it public knowledge that Batman has a high-tech HQ that he calls a Batcave? I can't imagine he's going around sharing that information and it's not like he brings anyone else to the cave. Does he have like an Airbnb listing for it? It's probably Blabbermouth Robin telling people to impress ladies at university. Yeah, that probably checks out. See? Aren't you glad I beat him to a pulp and blew him up? That's a different Robin! They all look the same to me. Batman is only conscious for a moment before passing out again. Roberta wants to call the police, but Sherman refuses in order to protect Batman. The two neighborhood bullies show back up outside and... discover the Batmobile. He's up. He shoots. It looks good. Well, it's a good thing that Sherman had a moving truck's worth of empty boxes handy. Sherman goes to get the bullies out of the car when they discover some antitoxin capsules inside. Sherman rushes to get them to Batman when the vulture shows back up. He manages to avoid the giant bird and get back inside, but if the vulture is there, it means that the penguin isn't far behind. Hmm, Penguin and the Vulture? That sounds like a buddy cop show from the 70s! Back in the basement, Sherman gives Batman one of the antitoxin capsules. Immediately after, the two bullies show up and try to pull Batman's cowl off, resulting in... No! Get back! Ugh. Say what you will about Sherman, but the kid's got principles. I hate him. The Penguin and his goons show up and cut the phone lines before Roberta can call the police. While Sherman borrows Batman's utility belt, the Penguin and his thugs make their entrance. So he had a substance in that umbrella that could melt metal, but went with the knockout gas when encountering Batman? He deserves to be defeated by children. Penguin and the wet bandits uh, enter the house and the rest of the episode turns into Home Alone, which came out Two years before this episode, and its sequel was coming out within a couple of months of it, so coincidence? Me thinks not. And if you don't believe me, just take a look at Harry and Marv here. You guys give up? Oh yeah, thirsty for more. Penguin and his thugs finally manage to corner the kids and the unconscious Batman in the basement. But before Penguin can finish the Dark Knight off, this happens. 
with the way the episode's been going, at least it was Batman doing something and not Penguin slipping on a... I don't know, a herring or something. Batman easily takes out Harry and Marv, but the Penguin isn't going down without a fight. Okay, time out. I've got questions. I'll ignore the fact that we just watched Batman crush that umbrella in his hands moments earlier, but how does that thing function? If the handle is a hidden blade, where are the mechanical parts that allow it to shoot pellets and gases? Where are the projectiles stored if the blade is stored in the umbrella shaft, which is what would double as the barrel? And how does that barrel have its own blades that pop out, separate, and spin like a tiny propeller? Huh, you have a point. Forget Batman's wonderful toys. Where do we get Penguin tech? Batman and Penguin then have a sword fight with Batman using a screwdriver. Sure. Why not? Just when Penguin thinks he's won, this happens. We don't really count the penguin as one of us, right? Of course not! Oh heavens, no! Sherman's mom comes home and flips out at the state of the house uh, until she sees Batman, at which point Sherman tries to hook them up. Say, Batman, you wouldn't be single, would you? Can you blame him? Who wouldn't want Batsy as a stepdad? Uh, I mean, who, aside from criminals, wouldn't want Batsy as a stepdad? The episode ends with Sherman now running his own successful junior detective agency resulting from his high-profile capture of the Penguin. And the icing on the cake? The bullies now work for Sherman. You're the boss, Sherman. While I don't hate this episode, it is a terrible first appearance for the Penguin, especially with all the care taken to introduce characters like Poison Ivy, Two-Face, Mr. Freeze, Joker, and Clayface. I feel like whoever wrote this just must hate the character. Now, I will say this, it was actually a great episode to introduce their new spin-off series. And because I guess you've been on such good behavior, what did you think, Bane? It does make both Batman and Penguin seem pretty useless, but imagine being a child watching this and thinking that there's hope that you too can help Batman and save the day instead of falling into a life of crime and becoming addicted to strength-enhancing drugs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 you know, whatever children think about. I don't want to talk about it anymore. 2.5 out of 5 Fabergé egg fatty packs. <laughs> That's it, just let it out, Bane. Only the strongest of men are capable of crying. Yeesh. Join us next time when we'll be covering Heart of Ice. Well, as long as it doesn't involve Mr. Freeze being taken down by a Pee Wee League hockey team. I'd say we're in better shape. Till next time, kiddies! What's inside a Fabergé egg, anyway? A Fabergé yolk? Yes, and inside the yolk was a golden hen. The hen was in the yolk? That seems backwards. And in the hen was a miniature diamond replica of the Imperial Crown. These eggs are just fancy Russian nesting dolls that people pay millions for. What a scam. Yes, our kind of scam. Bane, find us a buyer. I've got a plan forming. Full disclosure, it involves using the host as an egg mule. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like and a share. Don't forget to subscribe and click that bell icon to be notified when more Batman the Animated Recap episodes go up. And we've got some other cool nostalgic shows on the channel, so stick around. You might find something else that you like.